So what's the relationship between data and anthropology? Well, anthropology is data. I mean, humans make data and mm -hmm. humans measure data. So all the things that humans are doing with data is anthropology in a way. That we, we make what we study and we study what we make. Right. So, I, I, I mean, there's some data that's not, you know, in terms of measuring how many times a robot arm does whatever, but, sure. but that's still made by a human. Right. So I think anthropology is about data. It's about comparative data. Mm -hmm. We collect data and people and study it side by side with other data. But right. I guess the way I would define anthropology and data is really that I think they're kind of the same. Interesting. Because human, it's all made by humans. Mm -hmm. Everything, and it's measured by humans. So right. I sort of see it as, as both. So if it's made by or relevant to humans, it fits in, right? Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so I, I think I kind of know where your answer will go with this, but what can we <laughs> learn about uh, societies by studying their data trails? Well, in a way, so archaeology is studying data trails, right. right? But they're sort of long, long, long old data trails mm -hmm. in terms of analog uh, artifacts. Sure. But I guess it, it depends what you mean by data trails. So, for example, if, um, if you have someone who is, let's say we take two countries for mm -hmm. comparison. We take Germany and we, and we decide we're going to measure when they buy coffee. And we get some data on when they buy coffee between 6 and 7 in the morning yep. and 3 and 4 in the afternoon. And we do the same thing for the United States. Mm -hmm. And we get data that tells us when people are buying coffee and maybe what coffee they're buying. Mm -hmm. And maybe even where they're buying coffee. That doesn't give us information about the society. It sure. gives us information about coffee. <laughs> like we, right. we, know sure. that they might, yeah. we know that they might like black coffee or latte right. or they might like black coffee in the morning or latte in the afternoon. But it doesn't tell us the motivation or, mm -hmm. or what makes them a society. Do they gather because they want to share coffee? Do they need it because they're tired? Right. Do they just want a place to hang out before they go to work? Sure. And studying just that pure collected quantitative data doesn't get us the information about the society. Mm -hmm. But if we combine that with qualitative data, sure. where we hang out and kind of observe and talk with them about, hey, do you, do you like to go to work right away, or mm -hmm. are you, why are you stopping, or you know, talk with them? Then we can get a really strong story about right. what that society is. So, to answer your question, yeah, data trails do do some of that, but right. you also it's also helpful in a stronger story to have the qualitative data as well. So, can those data trails, the, the the quantitative data trails, can those sort of yield those questions, the why questions, why you know why in Germany are they buying? black coffee at six in the morning, you know, that type of thing. And does it lead to that inqu inquiry on the qualitative side? I want to understand your question. So, for example, if I've, you know, got access to a database, right, we're here at the Strata Conference and people here are looking at access to databases all the time. And drinking coffee. And drinking plenty of coffee. So, is there the opportunity there, perhaps from a data science standpoint, as well as anthropology, uh, to use that data to summon those questions in the quantitative sense, and then to use a qualitative why to go deeper and start to understand the impact on a societal realm. That's actually the kind of way that I'd like to work with big data. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in learning how to partner with the people that are working with big data to offer what I know about ethnographic research mm -hmm. and qualitative data to help them extract stronger stories from their data. Okay. So, sort of dovetailing with that, what is that path? Right, so you have uh, data scientists who are mining data and, and using very technical tools. Um, where is the handoff from that quantitative stuff to the to the type of storytelling and, and, and depth and qualitative stuff that you might be interested in pursuing? I think it depends on the data scientists and the flexibility of an organization and the reality of what their budget is to fund certain kinds sure. of research and whether or not they believe that qualitative data strengthens their data story. But in an ideal world, I think that what, what quantitative data can, can give us just in mining is you can see patterns. Yeah. They can see patterns. Oh, people are buying coffee between these hours and gee, they're buying black coffee yeah. and they're not buying as much coffee in the afternoon. Sure. Okay. And that gives us some story about, about uh, 
it gives some story about what the quantitative data is. But let's say all of a sudden there's some anal uh, anomaly where people are buying coffee, but then they kind of switch. So we've monitored them all along, and they've been buying coffee, and then they start buying like gin. <laughs> <laughs> sure, right, right. Then, you can start to make some conclusions. Then that, there. Well, yeah. it gives us more information to explore, like what is going right. on where that story's changed. It, it, what, what patterns in quantitative data give us is a regularity, which can, or regularity, which can give us room to look and sort of see, well, what is this overall mm -hmm. vibe or world that we're trying to explore? Right. But then if there's an anomaly, it gives us a clue as to where to explore, to understand something. If, if something's different, happening, that, that's an indicator of where we can probe to find out you know, more information. Okay, I see. So last question for you. Did that and, answer your question? Uh, no, absolutely okay. answer it, yeah. So last question I have for you, and, and I'd be remiss not to ask you about this given that your Twitter handle is, is Anthropunk. What is Anthropunk? So Anthropunk is, it's kind of a renaming of some things and it's pushing a concept to another place. Mm -hmm. And it was developed by Dr. Michael Fisher, who's my advisor, mm -hmm. and I was also a founding member of Anthropunk. So in material culture, um, we have this notion that people are starting to create culture. They create the culture that shapes them. Mm -hmm. So it, it used to be, as you would build, you'd build a tool, and that tool would create you, would give you some affordances that you could use to make something. And every time you'd adapt or change that tool, it would change the way you made something. Mm -hmm. So by making tools and changing tools and changing the way you make, that's how culture is made, right? Okay. We evolve as we, as we make tools that enable us. And sometimes tools fall off and they aren't as popular anymore, or things that we use, like we don't really use horses anymore now that we have cars. Right. So things kind of change and are fluid in what we call material culture. Okay. So with Anthropunk, it, explore, it pushes the idea of, of makers further. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that I really like about O'Reilly is that it sponsors both Strata and mm -hmm. Maker Fair. Sure. Because data is about making and people are about making. So to answer right. your question about Anthropunk, Anthropunk is about all the things that we make in the world. So each person, it's not that culture is something that we live in that is imposed upon us, it's something that we make, but each one of us is making it in our own way. Mm -hmm. So it's distributed and fragmented, and all of us make and create our own culture within the context of the larger culture. Okay. And the information that we share creates enclaves where we can come together and, and work and make things together. But we might be making something for different cultural reasons or different, mm -hmm. different motivations or reasons within us. But it's this idea that we're constantly remaking and reshaping the world, but we don't really examine that as humans. Right. I mean, do you think about that you're making and shaping the world? I don't. No, but that's I what don't. we're doing. I probably should, but I'm not. Yeah, so that's what we're doing, and that is Anthropunk. It's the idea that we're constantly making and shaping the world we live in, and, and that so we're all doing it. I know I said before that I had a last question, but I lied. This is the actual last question. So <laughs> is it a combination of uh, individualism and how you individually shape culture and then how as individuals we collectively come together? Is, I mean, is, is, well, I guess I it, right? it's sort of like, the way I like to think of it, it's the aggregate of the individual, Okay. right? So we don't get to control what our culture is. Like we make the piece that we make for whatever reasons mm -hmm. we make it in our lives, whatever right. we choose to do and be and put it out into the world and what the world influences us to be. And the collection of sort of all of us doing that creates sort of where we are at this moment okay, in I the see. world. Okay. So it is individual, but it's not people that, I guess, that's, but it's, it, I was going to say it's not about single persons influencing, but people do try to do that through politics or mm -hmm. people that are in power. But still, even that is a piece of this overall force of mm -hmm. people that are constantly making and changing all over the world. Right. And so we cycle all the time, right? Yeah. So well, Anthropunk is exploring that in terms of really taking us to be on our own as makers okay. in the I culture, see. I see. rather than just exploring it on an island tribe or, sure. <laughs> right. or right. that, yeah, people make culture, but it isn't everything. Yeah. And sort of we think it's what we're all doing all the time, that we're all makers of, of our world but it's not something we control. Right. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. You're welcome.